What up, y'all? It's T-Tar, and today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Johto and why it might be called Pokemon Legends Celebi and how Game Freak can give a big focus to Celebi to make it worthy of succeeding Pokemon Legends RC. So the way I imagine these games going, I think Legend Celebi, Legend Johto would essentially be a sequel to Legends Arceus in the same way Gold and Silver was a sequel to Red and Blue. It wasn't called Pokemon Red and Green 2, but it continued the overall storyline and happened right after it. I think the same will happen with Legend Johto. I think it's a good opportunity for Game Freak. And what this means is characters from the first Legends game, like Volo, after he walked away saying he'll find Arceus eventually, Kogita, all of these characters can still exist in the second game, even if it's just a cameo. Before we even get into Celebi, I talked a lot on this channel of the importance of Johto. And just to summarize it now, right now, Arceus is a Sinnoh Pokemon. It's worshipped in the Sinnoh region, and if you look at the lore of Arceus, they say when Arceus made the whole universe and settled on Earth, that it first made the Sinnoh region. But, I've made like a bunch of videos on this, I'll link them in the description. But here's the thing, as with in real life, history we could have recorded it wrong. And in fact, the chances are Arceus's history is recorded wrong. You see, Legends Arceus brings up the Celestica people who were closest to Arceus at the very start of Sinnoh. And so they were the ones who know all the answers about Arceus. This is where the ancient hero is involved in, Kogita and Volo's ancestors potentially. The Celestica people are a big deal. But the thing is, the Celestica people who first started all this Arceus Almighty Sinnoh worshiping came from a place called the Sinjo Ruins and are actually one half of the first people that seem to have discovered Arceus. The other half are the Johto people. And so I think before Arceus was worshipped in Sinnoh, it was actually first found and worshipped in Johto. And the evidence for this is the ruins of Alf. They were made 1,500 years ago and more likely than not, they're worshipping Arceus. Now I try to get into Game Freak's head. So we have Sinnoh and Arceus was in Johto before then. There actually seems to be potential for Arceus having been somewhere else before that. But we're going to focus on Johto because it's the next remake, revisit Pokemon games. Now, in terms of sequeling Arceus with Pokemon Legends Celebi, it all depends how Game Freak paints the picture. Remember, it's all in the marketing. Anything can be made to be hype. So, for example, you could say during the times people lived in Sinjo Ruins, maybe the ancient hero, they ran into Celebi. You can tie Celebi's history closer with Arceus than what the Diamond and Pearl clans or the Celestica people of Sinnoh all got to experience. And so all Pokemon has to do at the start of their hype season is talk about Celebi sharing some history with Arceus and leaving it on a mystery for us to figure out what the truth about Celebi is. And it'll make fans extremely hyped to see what role it actually played. After all, Celebi is potentially the coolest Pokemon. It has true freedom, not just like Mew, it can go to any time period at once. It's the kind of Pokemon you can really mess around with. But yeah, if a Legend Celebi does happen, I would want it to happen around 150 years ago. It doesn't have to go all the way to the times of when the Ruins of Elf was built, but you can still address the same mystery. And you see, when you're uncovering the Ruins of Elf puzzles, maybe more and more of them point to Celebi as much as they do to Arceus. Now to talk more about how Pokemon can make Celebi exciting. There's a very simple way. It's by giving it another form. A true form. Now I may be saying, well hold up, Celebi is a mythical Pokemon, these things don't happen. If I were to paint a picture, you could say something like, in those ancient times, Celebi actually had a much stronger form. Perhaps you could look at it as even a more chaotic form, where it messed with time much strongly. And something happened back in those days where it lost this form. And you can have a couple ideas to this, like, for example, the GS Ball. No one knows where it came from. When they updated the lore on the GS Ball and Ultra Sun and Moon by finally talking about it again, they made it sound like some master ballsmith made it, if that's even a word. And because in Pokemon Crystal, you put the GS Ball on the shrine and it causes Celebi to come from somewhere else to fight you, it doesn't come out of the ball. It's like it even time travels to you or just from wherever it was hiding, it's attracted to you and fights you. Could you imagine the GS Ball, what it actually contains is like the essence of Celebi's true form. And I can give the perfect example to this, which is Hoopa Unbound. So Celebi and Hoopa both have 600 BST. Hoopa Unbound is a crazy example where when you unbound it, it goes from being a mythical Pokemon to beyond Regigigas tier, to the tier of a cover legendary like Rayquaza, 680 BST. That's like the exact counterpart I'm trying to show here. Hoopa being this chaotic portal Pokemon, Imagine Celebi was the exact same kind, not that it was evil, but it could mess with time like crazy like that. And something happened and its powers were sealed in the GS Ball, just to give one example. 
that of making use of the Geus Ball. And so maybe, let's say this happened a thousand years ago, Celebi lost its powers and was put into this more smaller form. And over time, while it first started looking for its powers and the Geus Ball, that eventually gave up and just became this free time traveling Pokemon. But in the modern day, when you bring the Geus Ball back into light, Celebi is instantly attracted to it because that contains its original powers. Think of it like in Ruby and Sapphire, where the red and blue orb is still around, but they never let it go to Kyogre and Groudon until Oras to see that form change. You never know, maybe Celebi was actually a bad Pokemon back then, and what you're uncovering in the story of Pokemon Legend Celebi is how the ancient people in Johto, this predates the Celestica people, while they were worshiping Arceus and all, one of the big monsters that attacked them, and they needed Arceus's help to quell, was this Celebi unleashed Pokemon messing with time and so Arceus gets rid of Celebi and Celebi kind of falls in its tiny form and just roams around now and perhaps the story of Pokemon Legend Celebi is some evil villain uncovering this monster that was back then that they needed Arceus's help to stop and they're trying to bring its power back and Celebi's actually the big Origin Dialga and Palkia boss fight of that game. So if Game Freak put this new Celebi form on the cover, it would market it well. People would be like, I have to play this game, see what's up with the Celebi form. Unfortunately, it would spoil it, but it would get them a lot of sales. And if they wanted to add some secret in the game, they could have Celebi have another form as well, just so there's something to discover at the end of the game. But if not that, Maybe the cover is just like they did Legends Arceus, and it's just like the main character looking into the distance, cherry blossoms everywhere, and the two Johto towers in the distance before they were burnt. So it's like a cinematic cover for Pokemon Legends Celebi. Honestly, that cover worked pretty well for Legends Arceus. They sold 15 million copies. I suppose they don't have to spoil Celebi on the cover. But you see, a story like this can really tie Celebi closer to Arceus in a way you didn't expect. I only bring up the GS ball just because I know Pokemon will like to make use of stuff they already established. They could just totally introduce a new item, and that's what had Celebi's power to reunite it with. But to poke some fun with the GS ball, you can look at some of the interviews, right? So from 2008, when Poke Beach interviewed the main director for Pokemon's anime at the time, so they knew what was up with Celebi, they talked about how the GS ball was originally supposed to contain some gold and silver monster. And then they said, yeah, it was supposed to contain Celebi. You could look at them as independent, like there was some gold and silver monster scrapped from the Johto games, and then Celebi was put in the Geos Ball instead. Or you could kind of merge the two ideas together and say that Celebi is that gold and silver monster, and that if you gave it back its original power, the colors it emanates in some way gives it this gold and silver like look. Think about it being called the GS ball in that way, right? It's the ball, the gold silver ball is actually what they call it in Ultra Sun and Moon. It looks kind of cool. It looks like a stage above the master ball. But think about it, in ancient times they had to seal Celebi away, the gold and silver monster, in this gold silver ball. And then it gets lost to time, Celebi survives in its little tiny form and just wanders around. There's a fun story you can tell here, and this is just telling a new story, right? This whole story of Celebi. That's just me giving the main plot of the story without involving Arceus. Now Game Freak has to just sprinkle in whatever Arceus lore they want, and it makes for a cool successor to Legends Arceus. I know somewhere deep down in Game Freak's heart, they want to make sequels, but it just doesn't sell as well. Calling it Legends Arceus 2, it would mess up their sales. This is the perfect way they could do it. Wouldn't it be nice to look a year from today and have our whole vision of Celebi reimagined? You know, all this time we look at Celebi as the mythical of Johto. What if it turns out it's actually the monster of Johto, but the story about it's just been lost to time? Another way to mess with the gold and silver idea is like a heart of gold form and a soul of steel form, whatever that means, right? But maybe like if this is 150 years ago, around before the tower burned down, imagine there are two groups, each worshiping Lugia and Ho-Oh, and like Legends Arceus, whichever path you pick leads to what form Celebi uses in the final battle. And I mean, having these versatile forms makes this older Celebi look that much more of a threat that someone just needs to seal away. And it's pretty fitting to then call it the gold and silver monster, sealed in the GS ball. I think every game should tell its own original story, it doesn't need to borrow characters from other games, and this is a pretty fun original story. Now the title makes sense, right? Pokemon Legend Celebi. It's the legend of Celebi, but... It's still continuing Legends Arceus. Anyhow, make sure I'll shank that like button. Let me know your thoughts. There's a lot more you could intertwine into this. The unknowns. We talked about something special happening with the unknowns. The unknowns got eyes, my dudes. Could you imagine? They're keeping watch. 
Could you imagine? One of the things they're watching out for is Celebi. And this is why Celebi is always hidden. Until you put that GS ball on the shrine. Y'all had a good point sending me emails saying Legend Celebi isn't the most attractive title. That's why I made this video. Because it is not attractive unless Game Freak does something like this. Then it becomes really interesting. Also, shout out to another email y'all sent me is... <laughs> <laughs> my boy been watching me <laughs> he wet me <laughs> big shout out to mr who's the boss i appreciate you putting me in the video <laughs> me my out of focus camera big up my dude i appreciate it but yeah make sure i'll shank that like button and we got five weeks until pokemon day let's see if our ultimate johto vision works my dudes if they announce legends unova i will be so defeated <laughs> i'm putting myself out here by making these videos i'll see you on the next one take care